Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where it is time to take a look at my first knife purchase of 2024. And I gotta say, guys, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I made it like five or six days without buying a knife in 2024. I got this on like January 5th or 6th. As soon as it was available, I picked this up. I was really excited about it the moment I saw pictures of it. And I actually, I've had it out of the box. I kind of just left it in the box for the unboxing experience for you guys. Um, but I have had it, carried this in the pocket throughout the weekend and also just today I had it in the pocket. So I got some thoughts. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, um, but there are some good things to talk about too. And what we're talking about here is, get that out of the way, uh, the Spartan Blades Nemec. Now that is actually the designer. The designer's name is Nemec, but I think that's pretty much what the name of this knife is as well. It's the uh, Spartan Blades Nemec folder is pretty much how it's listed online. So uh, we'll set that aside here, take a look at what else comes with the, the purchase. Uh, you get a Spartan Blade sticker, nothing too crazy. It comes in this. And I think there was one of those little, um, little, uh, things in the desiccant pouches to uh, to take away condensation. I already took that out from when I really unboxed it. Like I said, this is not an unboxing. This is a full review. I've carried this now for a decent amount and I got some things to say about it. Uh, but before I do that, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length coming in at 8 inches with a blade length of 3.5 inches and a blade thickness at 125 thousandths. We have blade material of S35VN for the steel and we have a straight back style blade with a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.5 inches and a handle material of, as you could probably guess, uh, this is titanium. There's also a carbon fiber option as well that I believe is a little less less than this actual model right here. Uh, we have a liner lock for the locking mechanism and a user of a right or left hand tip up carry. And that comes via the very bottom of the knife here. As you can see, we have a wire clip with uh, holes to take the clip in and out of to reverse different left or right hand carry. Uh, weight for this particular model is 2.62 ounces. Keep in mind the carbon fiber variant, I believe comes in under two ounces. I think it's like one point eight six or nine six something like that designed by andres nemec and a price for this model coming in at 179.95 now the pricing on this model is really weird i gotta say no, normally when a knife is released like that's the price that's the retail price it's the same everywhere and there's no disagreements no any no problems this particular knife i have seen prices range from $179.99 up to, I think, $220, like $220 on some places. I don't want to throw any retailers' names out there because they may have changed that. Like, this was kind of weird. I've never really seen a knife with so much difference uh, in the price of it. So, like I said, I'm not going to throw names out there, but keep in mind, I'll have this linked to, uh, to where I got it from and places I would recommend. Um, but do your due diligence before you pull the trigger. Make sure you're getting one that's one of the lower prices out there. I would not pay $220 for this in, in, at any point for any reason. Um, and I got to say, I, I have a couple issues at $179.95, which is what this guy's coming in at. Uh, let's do that. Let's talk about that. And uh, let's take a look at some size comparisons and see just what we got here. This is basically like, this reminds me so much of the CRKT CEO, which is one of the reasons I got it. Cause I love that knife, but I wanted a premium version, which we never got from CRKT. Uh, I really wanted something like of this shape with titanium, a nice steel. Uh, so the best comparison I have here is probably, uh, the Kaiser or something that I can't remember the name of the Kaiser Mercury. Um, probably the best thing I have in terms of like thickness and just overall slenderness. I think that gives a pretty good comparison, but obviously there's a pretty big difference in length there as well as the blade of the Mercury is, I think 3.3 inches or 3.35 shorter blade, shorter handle, shorter knife in general. Uh, a couple other ones that may not be bad examples, uh, would be the Artisan Cutlery Sirius as well as the good old Benchmade 940. I think those will both be relatively close in overall length. So yeah, there you go. Not too bad. That's as best as I can do for this one. It's uh, quite different in terms of like just 
overall slenderness. I don't have many knives this thin. Uh, and really, as a matter of fact, this is basically, let's see, here's a uh, tactile turned pen. So as you can see, the thickness there is uh, pretty similar, obviously very different length. Uh, this is just your standard size tactile turn pen. So yeah, very much the size of like uh, probably a Sharpie, I would say. Very similar in terms of overall uh, thickness there, or circumference in terms of like this just like holding a Sharpie just with a little more of an oval shape to the handle. Oh, uh, let's talk about this blade. Uh, it's a really good looking blade. I, I love I love the looks of this knife in general. Like it's very much like a nice like gentleman's carry executive knife, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very classy, clean, sleek, really cool design. Love the design. Can't tell, can't say enough good things about the design of this knife. Um, but there was some execution here that I'm, I'm not really a fan of. Um, and some of it has to do with the blade here. So like I said, we have a, a blade stock coming in at 125 thousandths, which is fine. I don't, I mean, that's pretty standard. Uh, standard thickness is like 120 thousandths. So this is just slightly thicker, no big deal. The bigger problem is you kind of have like the OTF issue with this. And by that, I mean, it's just not a slicey blade, like not at all. Uh, it's really thick behind the edge. I have not actually measured this with my calipers yet, but I guarantee you this is like 27 to 30 thousandths. Like this is, this is, this is pretty thick behind the edge compared to what you normally see on my channel or with a lot of other knives. Like nowadays, pretty much all the Kaisers, all the Civivis, all the Vostids, including, you know, a lot of the, even the Benchmades and the Protex and the Microtex with the exception of OTFs. Um, a lot of knives are coming in between 20 to 25 thousandths, which is adequate. A lot of the other ones are coming in well under 20 thousandths and like the, you know, 15 to 19 thousandths. This one is thick as it is behind the edge. I don't love that. Um, this is not a slicey blade. It cuts. I mean, it's a sharp blade and I, you know, it will definitely cut something. Um, but I, I, I would really prefer it be thinner behind the edge. I get that it's a, a narrow blade and all that. I know, but... Ah, I just wish it would have been a little thinner, a little slicer. I mean, like a hollow grind would have been great here. A hollow grind, I think, would have really helped. Um, it has a relatively clean, smooth edge. It just gets thick really quick. And, I mean, you feel it going through paper. It it, it definitely is not a slicer of a blade. Um, but it's a rather robust blade, even up here at the tip. It's, it's pretty thick up here at the tip. So I don't really know what they were going for in terms of this is their uh, – it, it says uh, – field grade here on the box. So I'm assuming field grade means obviously this is not made in the USA. If there's any question about that, I should have noted that in the specs. This knife was made in Taiwan and it even says that there, right? Right down there. It says Taiwan. You can't read it, but take my word for it. That says Taiwan. <laughs> um, I, and personally, I have zero issue whatsoever of this being made in Taiwan. I, I could care less where it was made as long as it's made well and the price makes sense. I do think it was made well. Um, the, the action, the construction of the knife is all really nice. Um, Taiwan makes fantastic knives. So it, there, there's, I wouldn't say this is cheap. I think it's more of a lack of execution. Um, now the one thing that I do like about this blade is it has some nice jimping up here. And this flipper tab really does kind of act like, like a finger guard to where you can get a really nice little pinch grip right up here. And it feels pretty good in hand. And this is a very secure grip. I would never worry about my hand sliding onto the blade, which is pretty important, even though it's not a razor sharp blade or a very razor thin blade. It, like I said, it is still a sharp blade. You can still cut yourself. So uh, you still want to be careful. Uh, but yeah, in terms of like the sliciness that I look for in that true everyday carry, I can't say I'm getting it from this blade. Uh, moving into the handle. The handle also has some really, really impressive stuff going on but also a head scratcher for me. So um, in terms of this handle, you have some really, really nice milling. Some of the best milling that I've come across in quite a while, actually. This reminds me of all of my super expensive premium EDCs that I really like. Like there's something about milled titanium, the finer milled patterns that just feel good and they look expensive, even though they may, this obviously is not a four or $500 knife, but that's kind of what I relate you know, fine milling on titanium too. It just, it feels expensive and it feels nice. So I really like that. That was one of the selling points that made me go with the titanium over the carbon fiber. Um, and there really is all the detail in this milling. It really kind of smooths off towards the top, but then on the bottom here, you can kind of see the milling continue on, which is cool because it kind of lines up with the liner lock and it looks actually when it's closed, 
it looks pretty good. I, I like the way that looks. I like it a lot. And I don't really want it on this side. I think this side looks nice and clean. Um, and then on this side, you just have the continuation of the milling. I think it's cool. I like what they did there. Um, what I do not like, what I really, really don't like um, is this pocket clip. Because for one, it's very loose. And it's not... From everything that I've looked at, this is totally tightened down. Um, there's no real wiggle up in this area. They just use too thin of a wire. So this is obviously a duh, it's obviously a wire clip, but it's just too thin of a wire to where the thinness of the wire allows for way too much wiggle. Like that's way too much. That's more than I would ever want on a wire clip. That bugs me. When I'm paying $180 for a knife, that's something I would look at. And I really wish, especially for like this knife in general, I wouldn't hate a wire clip here, but I really wish they would have used a much thicker gauge of wire because that would have made a huge difference in the lack of wiggling back and forth if you had a thicker, more uh, robust wire clip. They don't have that. This is flimsy. Um, now it goes in and out of the pocket fine, and I will say the retention of the clip is very good, so I'm not worried about it coming out of my pocket, but another issue I had is when I had this in my pocket, so I actually had this, I was at the office today, I'm a plant manager, so I'm constantly out into the plant, I'm back in my office, I'm moving around, I'm getting up, I'm getting down, and my shirt, obviously, I wear like a, a you know, a collared polo shirt, um, it was getting caught up in this area, so the opening, the opening of the clip up here is actually bigger than it really needs to be, and again, since that wire clip is rather thin, it makes even that much more room to where I found my shirt getting, somehow it was getting caught under the clip. It was very weird. I've never had that issue uh, with a wire clip like this before, but I did. So um, I really don't like this clip at all. It's probably my least favorite wire clip of all time. So yeah, that's just really all I have to say about that. Uh, back here, you have a backspacer that it looks like it's some type of polymer. I don't really have a, too much of an issue with that. Um, I wish they would have... I, so I don't mind the backspacer coming out down here to make the lanyard hole. That's kind of what it is. I expect lanyard holes on most knives. Um, but I don't like how the backspacer comes out of, outside of the outline of the handle here. It really kind of takes away from some of the aesthetics of the beautifully milled titanium that they did a great job on. Uh, really kind of makes somewhat of an eyesore down here, in my opinion. I wish they would have just kept that flush with the handle. And then you could still have this come out and make your and make your lanyard hole. But it just looks it looks kind of off down here. I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Um, so that's a real bummer. Because going into the action of this knife, the action is, I think, fantastic. Uh, no issue with the action at all. Very, very smooth action. Uh, very nice, solid build here. I... This has to be on bearings. I actually, I can't even see in there. It's some nice tight tolerances too because I really can't. Maybe I have a, let's see something here. Try not to fall. Oh, let's see here. Can I see? Wow, that is stinking bright. I can't see. I don't think, there's no way. Yeah, I can't see. Uh, but there's no way that, that, that it has to be bearings in there. So, um, I'm going to rather confidently say this is running on bearings. Um, and so, yeah, so the action is, it, it's, it's very smooth. It's It's got a little bit of stiffness to it, but I don't mind that as long as I can shake it shut smoothly like that. Like that's, I'm pretty good. Um, the detent's very nice. And the flipper tab, while it sticks out from the handle, the flipper tab is really nice. I like this flipper tab a lot. It's very much a push button and it works really, really well. So um, I, I don't have any issue with the action on this knife whatsoever. I really like the flipper tab. I just think this knife could be so, so, so much better than what it is with a thinner behind the edge, whether it be a hollow grind or something to take care of that thickness behind the edge. And even more importantly, because like I said, the knife still cuts. It could, it could still easily pass as an EDC knife. It's just not slicey. I really prefer slicier blades nowadays on pretty much anything I carry. Um, this right here is just a no. That's a no all the way. I really wish they would have used some type of milled clip. I get it that the wire clip probably saved them some money. I would have rather paid a little more and have a better clip. Like some, maybe like some type of deep carry clip like that was on the CRKT CEO. The CEO was done so well, they just never gave us the version we wanted. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really hate this wire pocket clip to be totally honest. Um, I, so yeah, I mean, overall thoughts, overall experience with this knife, 
I wouldn't say don't buy it. Just know what you're getting into. Know that you're not going to have the world's sliciest blade. It's going to be rather thick behind the edge. And if you're if you're picky at all about your pocket clips, you you wouldn't like this. If you don't if you don't if yeah you ugh. I know it's such a big deal breaker for some people. For me, um, I do care a lot about my pocket clips, and I like like Giant Mouse. They do a fantastic wire clip. Um, a lot of other companies, Devo Knives does a fantastic wire clip. A lot of places make good wire clips. This, this is not one of those wire clips and it's not because it's loose. It's because it's just a weak, thinner gauge of wire. And yeah, not for me. That clip is not for me. So yeah, unfortunately, I think this is going to be somewhat of a catch and release for me. It's a bummer. I really don't like selling knives I buy. Usually when I buy something, I feel like it's going to be good enough to where I want to keep it forever. I don't think this is one of those. I don't think this is one of those. And I, I really like Spartan Blades, but yeah, I, I think this one uh, with a better clip and a, and a thinner slice of your blade, I think this has potential to be like one of the, oh, it, it could have been one of the better knives of the year, but with the thicker edge and especially this this bum clip, uh, yeah, it's it, I think it's a pass for me. I have to say it's a pass. I still really like the way it looks and I love the action on it, but unfortunately it just is what it is. So that's that guys. That is the Spartan Blades Nemec, my first purchase of 2024. Let me know what you think of this. What was your first knife purchase of 2024? Drop it in the comments. Let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day and until the next one, I'm out.